Purdue will be receiving. Rich Spangler has it teed up for Ohio State. He'll be kicking with about a 15 mile an hour wind at his back. Right. Everett back looks and throws to Griffin. Wide open, a first down out at the 41 yard line. Depending on the play for Ohio State was number 58, Dennis Houston, a junior outside linebacker. The Buckeye defense, 97, Dave Cresilius, and 57, Dave Morrill. The tackles, the middle guard, 59, Tony Gilliani. Houston and 14, Eric Cumaro are the wide linebackers. Inside, it's 98, Pepper Johnson, who leads the team in tackles, and 33, Larry Kolick. The secondary after this play, first and 10 boilers from their own 41. Misdirection, Wallace, big hole. Has some running room into Ohio State territory. Down to the 40, down to the 30. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Run out by number seven, Sonny Gordon, the strong safety from Middletown, Ohio. The free safety is number 12, Terry White, a redshirt freshman on the corners. Two first-year freshmen, William White, 37, and Greg Rogan, 29. The Boilers are first and 10 at the Ohio State, 25. The officials for today's ball game: the referee, Jerry Hendrickson. The umpire is Tom Manning. The headlinesman, Bob Colbert. The line judge is Gil Marchman. The field judge, Larry Nemers. The side judge, Dick Honig. And the back judge, Tom Klein. 14-47 left to play here in the first period, and Purdue on two plays has moved from their own 30 to the Ohio State 25. Bruce King, a lot of running room off the left side. Good blocking at the point of attack by Drew Banks. And the Boilers now have a second down. We'll call it five at the 20. Bruner is out. Price is in. Price goes wide to the top of your screen, out of your picture, wide to the bottom is Griffin. Scott the tight end on the strong side left. Split backfield. Looks like a passing set for the Boilermakers. Everett the straight drop. Has time. Looks throw. Scott has it first down at the 13-yard line. No. No, he dropped the ball. He was stripped of the ball as soon as he caught it. Number five, Jeff Cargile was in on the play along with the middle linebacker, Thomas Johnson. Ray Wallace's 34-yard run has the Boilers in good field position. He's out of the ball game now. Carter in on third down five, along with Bruner and Griffin, the wideout. Everett has time, finds Griffin. Touchdown, Purdue! He beat Kevin Richardson, a senior quarterback from Cleveland, who played in all 12 games for the Buckeyes last year. A three-year letterman, but Griffin beat him like he wasn't there. Purdue is on the board quickly. We played a minute at Wasade Stadium. Randine is a perfect nine for nine on point afters. Thorns in the hold. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Purdue takes a seven to nothing lead. And the gold towels fly all over Ross Age Stadium. The Boilermakers driving 70 yards in five plays. Just a minute elapsed time off the clock. Randina will now tee it up. The Boilermakers on Steve Griffin's first touchdown of the year, a 20-yard pass from Jim Everett leading 7-0. John Wooldridge and Byers are deep for Ohio State. Byers averaging 24 and a half yards on his kickoff returns. That's about what Wooldridge is averaging, too. The kick is going to come down to Wooldridge, but he lets it bound out of the end zone. A touchback, it will come out to the 20-yard line where the Buckeyes take over first and 10. They kicked away from Byers, who will be the tailback when Ohio State starts on offense. The fullback will be 28, Roman Bates. At quarterback, of course, 15, Mike Tomzak, the three-year letterman from Calumet City, Illinois. The wideouts will be number two, Chris Carter, and number one, Mike Lanise. The tight end, 85, Judd Groza. The tackle, 75, Rory Graves, and 73, Mark Krerowitz. The guard, 74, Scott Zelensky, and 64, Jim Lachey, and Kirk Loudermilk. Number 63 is up over the ball at center. A lot of experience on the Ohio State front. Tom Zach waits, looks, throws, and Lamise got tied up with one of the officials just beyond the line of scrimmage. So it will be second down, 10 for the Buckeyes from their own 20. On the Purdue defense across the front, 91 Melvin Menke and 90, 98 Don Baldwin will be the end. 71 Bob Zilts and 92 Brad Horner, the interior lineman. Horner at nose. 49 Tony Visco. Visco wearing 49 today as uh, one of the outside linebackers to confuse the Ohio State blocking scheme, which keys on it. 57, Jason Houston, 44, Kevin Sumlin, the inside backers for Purdue. Byers the call, runs straight ahead, Sumlin's on him, 
a gain of about three before someone drops Keith Byers. It will be third down seven. The Purdue secondary, 15, Don Anderson, and 19, Chris Dishman at the corners, 26, Rod Woods in the free safety, and 23, Kennedy Wilson, should be getting the call today at strong safety. Yes, he is in there, although he has been injured and hampered by a bad wheel. Ohio State up over the ball on third down seven from their own 23. Split backfield, double wide out, tied in on the left side. Tom Zach to throw. Has his man. It's number two, Chris Carter, and he is well beyond the 35-yard line, out around the 38. That will be a first down, a big gain on the play of 15 yards for the Buckeyes. First and 10 for Ohio State from the I formation. Byers is the tailback. He gets the call, runs straight ahead. Big hole. And he just rolls over Rod Woodson into Purdue territory at the 49-yard line. Woodson got low on Byers, but he just really couldn't stop him. Byers took Woodson for another three yards and has a first down just inside the 50. 88, Alex Higdon is in now at tight end. Three wideouts for Ohio State. Byers again straight ahead, gains about seven. Maybe six down to the 45, 44 yard line. Houston was there on the stop for Purdue. Fred Strickland, 48, comes into the boiler defense, replacing 49 Visco. Lanise and 49 Doug Smith go wide to the far side of the field at the top of your screen. And wide to the near side is Chris Carter, who has the catch for the first down. On second down, five Ohio State at the Purdue 45. Quick pitch to Byers. He's drilled. Bob Zilch got him, may have thrown him for a loss on the play. Porter helped out, too. Bob Zilch, the junior from Homewood, Illinois, his second tackle for loss of the year. And Ohio State now is faced with a third down, six at the boiler, 46. Wooldridge comes into the lineup, Byers comes out. He is in a split backfield with Roman Bates. Wooldridge has only one pass caught this year. He gets the ball in the draw play, needs to get to the 40 and does not make it. He stopped about two yards short of the first down. Little extracurricular after the play. Houston and Visco were in on the play. And it will be now a fourth down two for Ohio State. And on comes one of the specialty units. It's the punting team, 19 Tom Tupa leading the NCAA in net punting yardage with 45. On 12 kicks this year, he has an average of 48.3. And he's kicked six out of bounds inside the 20. This, the line of scrimmage, the 42 of Purdue. Griffin is back deep for Purdue, standing on his own 10-yard line. Long count, Ohio State trying to draw the Boilers offside. Tupa will have a wind at his back. They'll take the five-yard penalty and kick it from uh, even deeper. Now Tupa with the line of scrimmage, the Purdue 47, has a little bit more yardage to work with. That win may blow his kick into the end zone anyway. Looks like it will. It's a shot. Purdue will start out first and 10 from their own 20 on the touchback. Well, Purdue scored with a minute gone in the ball game. And Ohio State right now with four minutes in a time of possession uh, edge to the one minute Purdue has, but Purdue moved quickly for their only touchdown of the ball game. The game, the game right now, a 7-0 lead for Purdue. Double wide out, Everett on the draw to Wallace. This play worked for 34 yards earlier. Wallace this time gets about three before he's brought down. Number seven on the play for Ohio State coming up from his strong safety position, Sonny Gordon, the sophomore from Middletown, Ohio. Nine and a half minutes left to play here in the first period, and Purdue is on top, seven to nothing. From a split backfield, double wide out, tight end left, Everett drops. Pump fake, Marty Scott has it, has a first down out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And he's brought down right there in his tracks by Pepper Johnson, 98. Well, Purdue keeping Ohio State's defense off balance, averaging a whopping 13 yards on first down so far and they're going to throw on first here Everett finds Griffin wide open into Ohio State territory down at the 46 yard line brought down there by 
by 29, Greg Rogan, and 37, William, William White. Well, Griffin is seventh in the nation based on catches per game. Came in today with 23, now has 25 on the year, including the touchdown catch. Pepper Johnson pulls Wallace down by his shoulder pads after a gain of two to the Ohio State 45-yard line. We'll call it a gain of one. Second down, nine. Check that Griffin statistic. Three catches today for 51 yards, including a 20-yard touchdown. Second down, nine, Purdue in Ohio State territory. Marty Scott drops the ball. Wouldn't have had a first down, but he would have had a gain of about five. Rogan hit him, but Scott had dropped the ball before Rogan even arrived on the scene. Third down, nine, Bruner and Griffin go wide to the top of your screen. Purdue one of one on third down conversions. We'll see if they can handle it here. Single setback. The blitz, Everett gets away from it. He probably won't get the first down, though. No, he will not. He's about three yards short. Stopping him on the play for Ohio State, 82 Byron Lee and 58 Dennis Houston. So now Leon Burnett has some soul searching to do, and he sends in the punting unit. Brian Thornson will be kicking into a pretty stiff wind. Lone uh, deep back for Ohio State is number 12, Terry White. Thornson. As it die, the Boilers can't get to it. It's in the end zone, a touchback. So Purdue will have Ohio State starting from their own 20. 7-17 left in the first period. Purdue up 7-0 when we come back. Pontiac. It's brand new. It's from Pontiac, and it's called Grand M. The latest in Pontiac road car technology, Grand M is a true driver's coupe. That means it's built for drivers who appreciate engineering excellence as well as exciting road machinery. You know who you are. Grand Am, new from Pontiac, only from Pontiac. Buy yours today from John Shaver Pontiac Dotson, Indiana's largest Pontiac Dotson dealer. At the Baltimore Men's Shop, our professional fitters assure you of the finest comfort and fit for your next suit or sports coat. With the Baltimore having the largest suit inventory in the area, Bob Stevens and Bob Thomas are kept busy checking over new fall shipments that arrive daily. Get ready for fall in a new leather coat. The Baltimore leathers provide good look and protection in a variety of styles and colors. Top it off with a Stetson hat for casual or dress wear. The Baltimore Men's Shop at 4th and Main in Lafayette. State still with the edge in time of possession, but Purdue still with the edge on the scoreboard. Tom Zach gives it to Byers from the eye, and Byers gets four yards before he's brought down. Visco was there to finish him off. Horner put the first hit on him from his nose guard position, 92. Byers, who scored 54 points so far this year, second in the nation in scoring. This is Roman Bates, the fullback. First down, out across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Donnie Anderson and Dishman were there to bring him down. So Roman Bates, the forgotten man in the Ohio State backfield, the sophomore fullback from Memphis, Tennessee, picked up eight. You know, Ohio State on first down, not doing too bad. Five and a quarter yards a carry. Throwing here. The pass completed to Doug Smith. Oh, he's got a lot of running room. Woodson finally hauls him down in Purdue territory at the 32-yard line. Doug Smith, the 6'1 junior for Atlanta, catches his third pass of the year. He didn't let her last year. Ohio State with a virtually untested group of wide receivers. Tom Zach now two of three for 54 yards. Jimmy Everett, four of six for 61. Woldridge now, the tailback, gains down to about the 26-yard line. Give him a gain on the play of about five. And Sumlin was there to help bring him down. Jason Houston also tripped him up. 5.25 and the clock running here in the first period. Purdue on top. Tom Zach, play fake, looks into the end zone, has a man incomplete. Dishman was beaten briefly by Chris Carter, a 6'3 freshman. He's a little brother, by the way, of uh, the Pacers, Butch Carter, a parade All-America last year at Middletown. 
the Buckeyes 0 for 1 on third downs are faced with a third and five at the Purdue 26. Fake to Byers. Tomzak has to wait. Finally gets it away. Incomplete intended for Doug Smith. And good coverage on the part of Kennedy Wilson, the junior from Chicago. Well, Ohio State doesn't have much faith in Rich Spangler. It's field goal kicker with a wind at his back. He would have had about a 43-yard field goal attempt, but Ohio State going for it on fourth down five. Tomzak gets it away. The pass is incomplete. And the receiver, Doug Smith, went down. Sumlin, Visco, and Woodson were all around, but no flags were thrown. There looked like there could have easily been interference on the Boilermakers there, but there was not, so Purdue takes over on their own 25. The Buckeye passing attack, not really very potent, averaging nine yards so far today uh, per attempt, and it's not productive as Purdue has stopped Keith Byers. Now, Wallace on first down gains about four. Looked like there might have been a loose football. There was. Purdue turns it over on their own 30-yard line. Now, turnovers have not hurt Purdue so far this year. Kolick picked it up. Larry Kolick. And that's his first fumble recovery this year, first of his career at Ohio State. And it gives the Buckeyes the ball on the Purdue 29-yard line. Just under five minutes to play here in the first period. Purdue still with a 7-0 lead. They have not been burned by any of their four turnovers this year. Both these teams, Ohio State and Purdue, with a plus eight turnover ratio. Byers gets the call. Houston can't get him. And he gains down to the 20-yard line. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Corey Cooper and Woodson were there to stop Keith Byers. Byers now five carries for 38 yards on the day. Double wide outs to the bottom of your screen. That's the wide side of the field. Tomzak might be checking off the line. Option to Byers, a lot of running room. He might score, he will score. Two missed tackles, one by Woodson at the 10-yard line, and Purdue just wasn't ready for the option. And Byers was one-on-one -on -one in the open field with a couple of defensive backs, and he ran right over him. So Ohio State now, with the extra point, will be back in this ball game tied. Spangler is on. He is... 17 of 19 in point afters on the year, so he's not exactly automatic. His holder will be number one, Mike Lanise. Spangler a rarity anymore, a straight-on kicker. Has plenty of leg into this, and it's good. So Ohio State has tied it with 4.09 left to play here in the first period at 7-7. Spangler has it teed up. He kicked the ball clean out of the end zone his last time, so Purdue started on their touchdown drive from their own 30. Both touchdown plays, 20 yarders. Griffin's touchdown catch from Everett and Keith Byers' touchdown run on the option. So he now has 60 points, which leads the Big Ten by a long shot in scoring and is, as we said at the top, second in the nation. Spangler's second kickoff comes down to Wallace a yard deep. Busts it up to about the 14-yard line, and then he's dropped right there. 35 on the play for Ohio State made the big stop. Joe Jenkins, a linebacker, and Purdue takes over deep in their own territory. Only the second fumble the Boilers have lost this year by Ray Wallace, and it leads to an Ohio State touchdown. Purdue can ill afford any more mistakes such as that one the rest of the day if they're going to upset Ohio State. A gain of two by Bruce King off the left side of the Ohio State defense. And he's brought down by Byron Lee from Columbus. On second down long, Cresilius leaves the Ohio State front and Richardson comes in. Richardson, 21, was the man beaten on the touchdown play by Griffin. Ohio State looks like they're going to blitz. Kolick and Pepper Johnson both fake the blitz. Now they wheel off. Everett throws wide open. Jeff Price, first down out. Near the 30, they're going to mark him out at the 29-yard line. Richardson again was defending for Ohio State. Cresilius now back in, a three-year letterman. 
at the defensive tackle spot. Everett hits Bruner this time. Bruner slides ahead for a first down out across the 40. He's brought down there by number 12, Terry White. That's the redshirt freshman from Cambridge, Ohio. Second leading tackler for Ohio State with 33, by the way, from his free safety position. That was Bruner's first catch, gain of 11. Griffin has three, Price has the other one from Jim Everett. And he's gonna throw again. Swings it out to the sideline to Rodney Carter. Carter is met and stood up over here by Pepper Johnson and Rogan, but he didn't get much yardage, maybe about three. Second down along seven for Purdue. They send Bruner wide left, and it's Griffin wide right. Everett's going down. Back at his own 38-yard line, a loss of about six on the play. The sack made by Dave Morrill, number 57, that's his fourth tackle for loss this year, starting his 17th straight game for the Buckeyes. Purdue clicked on their first third down conversion of the day, missed on their second, so they're one of two. Third down 13 from their own 38-yard line. Shotgun formation. Everett with a little bit of time. Deep over the middle, intercepted. Second turnover of the first period by Purdue, picked off by Terry White, his second interception of the year. Ohio State now has a chance to go up in the ball game. Good field position just outside their own 35-yard line. Purdue had been throwing the outs pretty effectively. But that time Everett went over the middle and he threw into some traffic. Tomzak going to throw on first down. Waits looks for Byers, has him. Byers outruns Merkel Williams, the linebacker who was covering him, and almost breaks it again. He's down into Purdue territory at the 42. Purdue with its second front in the ball game and second string linebackers. Corey Cooper also in its strong safety. He's number two on the depth chart. On first down, Wooldridge gets down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, and Visco brings him down. Visco and Rod Woodson and Don Anderson are the only defensive starters still in the ball game for Purdue at this point. Leon Burnett giving his first defense a rest. Wooldridge won a letter last year as a freshman for the Buckeyes. So he's a sophomore from Akron, Ohio. Lanise goes in motion. Wooldridge gets the call. Big hole. Corey Cooper tripped him up. Woodson finishes him off, but not before he gets a first down at the Purdue 31-yard line. The Buckeyes with over 10 yards on first down on the average here in the first period. The game tied 7-7. We have 45 seconds left in the period. Byers does a little stutter step, waits for a hole to open up. Derek Wimberly and number 99, Kevin Holly, seeing his first action for a while in the ball game, make the stop. With his injured ankle, Holly did not play last week against Michigan State. Sumlin and Houston back in at linebacker. Strickland is in replacing Visco. Tom Zack to throw, wide open Lanise. Puts a step on Don Anderson, gets out of bounds at the 11-yard line. They're going to mark it. So Lanise, who came in with 16 receptions on the year, makes his first catch, and Ohio State is knocking on the door at the end of the first period. So the Buckeyes will have a first down 10 at the Purdue 11. The game tied 7-7 when we start the second period. Stay with us. We start the second quarter. Paul Stouter back at Ross Aid Stadium. The Ohio State Buckeyes have taken advantage of two Purdue turnovers. The first one, a fumble by Ray Wallace on his own 29 yard line. Two plays later, Keith Byers in for the touchdown from 20 yards out. Then a Jim Everett pass intercepted by Terry White. The Buckeyes have driven to the Purdue 11 where they have it first and 10. Byers up the middle. Stopped. They're all over him. He got a couple, but. Purdue effectively has stopped Byers almost every time this uh, game when he's run inside. The only time they didn't stop him really was on the option play that he ran for the touchdown. The difference in this ball game now probably will become the two Purdue turnovers, at least the difference in the first half. Roman Bates finds some room. Brushed off of a block inside. 
by Scott Zelensky, 74, and he got down near another first down on the Purdue two-yard line. From this point, people don't stop Ohio State very much. It doesn't matter who you are. It's third down one. Bates was about a yard short of the first down. Byers, stop, loss. Good play by Sumlin. Sumlin pulled Byers' shoe off and spiked it at the five-yard line. Kevin Sumlin's defensive play now brings Spangler on to attempt a 19-yard field goal. Lanise will hold. Spangler's kick is up. I don't think he got it. Son of a gun, it was wide left. He had the wind blow it wide. So Spangler, who came in three of five on field goals, twice missing from 30 yards, missed a gimme, a 19-yard chip shot. He just got under it and kicked it. The wind blew it wide. So Ohio State... 0 for 3 on third down conversions. If Purdue can stop them on first down when they're getting about 10 yards of play, they should be able to shut down Ohio State's defense. At least that's what the statistics tell us so far. Everett brings the Boilermakers up to the line. And trips. A loss on the play of five. It'll give Purdue a second down and 15. It's about the same as a procedure call, except the Boilers lose the down. Rodney Carter's back in the ball game for the Boilermakers. And Everett shifts into the shotgun from his own 16-yard line. It's now second down, 14. Inside handoff. Nice play to Carter. He gets outside across the 20. Out to the 28-yard line. Short of a first down, but a big play. Rodney Carter, the Elizabeth, New Jersey native, who had his starting job taken away by Ray Wallace in the Minnesota game when Carter left with a thigh bruise, has Purdue now in good position on third down short, just across their own 28. Again, Purdue one of three now in third down conversions. The last time on third, Everett threw the interception. Wallace is tripped and does not make the first down. 97 was the guy that made the stop, Dave Cresilius. His third tackle for a loss this year, the 6'5 senior from Ashland, Ohio, the honor student in engineering, and Thornton is on to kick. He is deep to return the punt of Brian Thornton, who's averaging just over 36 yards a kick. Snyder's staff is a little bit low. Thornton gets away a boomer, a driving kick. Lanise finally fields it back on his own 15-yard line. He runs wide. He's taken down on the 28-yard line. Corey Cooper and 46 Kevin Roy were down to get him. But that was an awfully good kick by Brian Thornson. 56 yards with a little bit of a wind at his back. First and 10 Buckeyes from their own 29-yard line. Bad snap. Flags all over the place. At the snap, probably encroachment or one of the offensive linemen moved. We have a minute or 11-12 left to play here in the first half. Purdue could only keep the ball out of the hands of Ohio State as you look at Coach Earl Bruce for a minute 38 on that last drive. Tom Zack to throw now on first down 15. Lanise cut at the wrong time. Tom Zack had the ball there, but Lanise did not turn to look for it until it was too late. Woodson was defending. Mulcrone and Merkel Williams were the linebackers on that first play for Purdue. And now Woodson or uh, Sumlin and Jason Houston come in. Byers is out of the ball game too. And Ohio State's going to throw it again. Tom Zack missed fires. You know, he wasn't very good last year against Purdue. 8 of 17 with a couple interceptions at Ohio State. The difference in that ball game was Byers, and uh, he's the difference really in today's ball game is he's responsible for Ohio State's only points. The Buckeyes still over three on third down conversions. Byers is back in the ball game from the I formation. Gets the call on the option. This is the touchdown play from before. And Byers gets outside, but he won't have the first down. He stopped after a gain of about five. 
Corey Cooper and Woodson were on good pursuit for the Boilermakers. And Byers is down in front of the Purdue bench. I don't believe he's hurt. He's just having some trouble getting untangled from the pile. Tupe is back to kick for Ohio State. His first one went 46 yards. This one into a little bit of a win. The Boilers have a 10-man rush. Griffin is the lone deep man. Purdue trying to make a break right here. Tupa gets away a shot, but it hangs up in the wind, and Griffin doesn't signal fair catch. He tries to outrun about six guys. He's not going to get much done. Steve Griffin, a negative three yards on the return. The kick, a pretty good one off the foot of Tupa, another 46-yarder. Everett brings them up. Carter and King are the split backs behind him. The wideouts are Bruner and Griffin. Carter the call. Loose football, but I believe he was down. The Boilers need a long, sustained drive right now. The defense has done the job well enough to stop the Ohio State offense, but they can't do it all day. Carter splits way wide now in the ace formation. Single setback, Bruce King. A lot of time. And Everett hits Marty Scott over the middle. Loose football. It was whistled dead. It was whistled dead at the 30-yard line. A first down for the Boilermakers, although Ohio State did strip Marty Scott of the ball. Everett now 9 of 11 for 98 yards and a touchdown, but he's also thrown an interception. Still 7-7. 9.30 left to play here in the first half. On first down, Wallace gets the call. Fights his way ahead for three pretty tough yards. Kolick was the man that finally put the finishing touches on him, and Pepper Johnson, the other inside backer, was the guy that got Wallace first. Price brings the play into the Purdue offense and now splits wide to the top of your screen, wide to the bottom. It's Griffin on a split backfield set. Second down, seven. Draw play to Bruce King. Not much running room. Cresilius was there to stop him. Nobody blocked Cresilius, really, and King didn't have much. Got maybe a yard, so it's now third down. We'll call it a long six for Purdue. And Cresilius now leaves the ball game, and they get the extra defensive back in in Richardson, number 21. Purdue one of four on third down conversions. From their own 34, they need to keep the drive alive here. Ohio State has the edge in possession time. That'll tell its tale in the fourth period as Purdue's defense gets more and more tired. Long pass over the middle. And it was defended very well by 29 Rogan. And Bruner was open deep behind the coverage, but Everett didn't have the presence to see him. He was hurried a little bit. So Thornson is back now to kick. Barely gets it away. Another good one, though. Lanise back at his own 15, runs up. And find some room down the sidelines. He shook a couple tacklers off and got out to the 27-yard line. So a pretty good kick again by Thornton, 51-yarder. And Ohio State starts out first and 10. The ball will be at their own 27-yard line when we come back with 8.04 left to play in the first half. The game tied at 7. State has had the ball a little over 12 minutes in the ball game and Purdue a little over 10. Both touchdown drives have been real short ones. Screen to Byers. Loudermilk, a good block out in front. Byers has a first down out across the 37 to about the 38-yard line. Pursuit good on the play by Purdue as Rod Woodson came over and made the stop. 12 yards on the reception for Byers. Groza in a tight end, 85. He lines up on the right side. That's the wide side of the field. Bates on a counter play, doesn't find any running room. Jason Houston brings him down at about the 38-yard line. So call it no gain on the play, second down 10. Lanise comes wide to the bottom of your screen, the wide side of the field, and Dishman comes up, plays him tight right on the line. Tomzak looks the other way, hits Byers, first down. Someone was on him in pass coverage, and Donnie Anderson came over to finish him off, but Byers, I'm sure, had the first down at the 49-yard line. 
Lanise again wide to the near side. Split backfield. Bates and Wooldridge now in, giving Byers a rest. Wooldridge the call. Pulled down after a gain of about three. Nice pursuit and nice penetration by Kennedy Wilson. The pursuit from Brad Horner, the nosed man, who came back to get him after a gain of three. The ball in Purdue territory. At the 48-yard line, second and seven, and Tom Zach wants to throw. Looks deep and has his man out there. It was number two, Chris Carter, but the pass was batted down, broken up well by Don Anderson again. Purdue secondary has been extremely improved over last year. They've given up one touchdown all year long, and they're leading the Big Ten in pass defense. On third down seven, Byers is back in, in the eye behind Roman Bates. The fake to him. Tom Zach looks, another man deep, Carter again, but Disham this time was right on him. So Ohio State becomes 0 for 5 on third down conversions, and Tupa comes in to punt again. The line of scrimmage, the Purdue 48. The Boilers will get the ball back with about six minutes to go in the half. Tupa will try to hang it up in that win. Angling for the near corner. Griffin is going to let it bound down. It's going to be dead at the 78-yard line. So a 40-yard punt on the part of Tupa. And Purdue takes over inside their own 10-yard line. They've had poor field position almost the entire season in every game, and they've still been able to go 3-1. and one. So if they can control the ball, they might be able to go up and Ohio State not get the ball back in this half. The last thing Purdue needs right now is another turnover. on first down doesn't find much running room but he does get about three or four out across the 10 to the 13 Houston is there along with Kolick to bring him down for Ohio State second down six Purdue Griffin to the far side price to the near side from the eye formation Wallace is behind King Wallace the call again off tackle out across the 16 to the 17 yard line. Brought down this time by number 55, Ray Holloman, the nose man from Holland, Michigan. Purdue one for five on third down conversions. The one third down they made was in their touchdown drive at the beginning of the game. Third down two, Everett's gonna throw for it. Finds Griffin and Griffin didn't run a good route. He didn't run up the stick on the far side. He ran about three yards behind it, and that's where he was brought down. So Thornson now has to kick from deep in his own territory, and you would think Ohio State is going to think block right now. Thornson standing on his own one-yard line. Ohio State doesn't have a big rush, though, and Thornson with that win behind him. Again, a low-line drive kick. This time it's fielded. By number 22, Davidson, and he was dropped on the spot by Corey Cooper. So a good kick by Thornson. A 46-yarder, and Cooper with the good play on the coverage. Tom's not going to throw one-on-one -on -one coverage on first down, nearly intercepted by Dishman. He came over the back of Cooper, or Carter. Tom Zach, 6 of 15 for 115 yards. Carter wide to the near side, Lanise to the far side. Byers takes the pitch. He stacked up. And again, Purdue doing what they wanted to do at the beginning of the day. They want Byers to go wide. They figure he's a better runner running straight ahead. And when you have the angle on him, you take away a lot of his power. The towel's beginning to be waved at Ross Age Stadium, Ohio State. 
one of seven on third downs. Have a third down eight at their own 40. Three wide receivers. No tight end in the ballgame right now. Byers on the draw. Well, no, this is Woldridge. Woldridge does not have the first down, although he made a valiant effort to get it. He's about a yard and a half short. So Tupa again will come on to kick with under three minutes left in the first half. 2.50 to go. Earl Bruce sending on the punting unit, I believe, on fourth down and one, a little less than one. No, actually, I guess they're going to go for it. They're in their own territory. I guess they figure Byers can pick up a yard. The clock running, 2.40 to go here in the first half. A 7-7 seven, seven tie. Two tight ends in the game. Looked like the fullback Bates moved ahead of the play. Byers fumbled the football. But I think he fell on it. Ohio State has the ball, but there is a flag. Roman Bates, the fullback, went a count too early, and the procedure is going to nullify the first down, and Ohio State will bring the punting unit on. There's the referee marking it off, Jerry Hendrickson. So Tupa will be on, and two and a half minutes left in the first half. Tupa's previous two punts, 46 yards apiece, and then uh, a 40-yarder that went out on the Purdue nine-yard line. So he's about the most effective punter that Purdue has seen, the most effective punter that Purdue's seen this year. Kicking into the wind, another shot. Nice, tight spiral, beautiful kick. Gonna bound down and be dead at the five-yard line. Ohio State falls on it there. A 53-yard punt, no return, and Purdue will be deep in their own territory. At this point, you just don't want to avoid, you don't want to turn the ball over. You want to avoid it at all costs. Both Purdue and Ohio State have all their timeouts, three. The Boilermakers backs in the end zone. King on first down. A little bit of running room. King got six, so it's second down for Purdue. The clock continuing to run at 120. I don't really believe the Boilermakers are going to try to put more points on the board unless they get some more operating room. And they need a big play to break right here. King's not going to have it. A gain of about three out to the 13, 14 yard line. And Purdue now with a third down short. They need to go right to the 15-yard line for a first down. They do take timeout. Ohio State takes timeout, hoping to get the ball back in good field position and maybe a field goal on the board before halftime. 57 seconds left. So the Buckeyes, if and when they get the ball back, will have two timeouts left in the half to work with and probably... 40 seconds or so of clock time. That's provided Purdue does not make the first down here, and it doesn't look like Wallace has it. 11 white-shirted Buckeyes are all over him, and he'll be about a yard short. The clock continuing to run about 40 seconds, and Ohio State will get the ball back on Thornson's punt. Thornson standing on his own goal line, Ohio State, a nine-man rush make it eight they have two wingmen out on produce pursuit people Thornton gets the kick away with the win and it kicks out of bounds at the 48 yard line so a kick of 37 yards under some pressure by Thornton and Ohio State has 28 seconds and a timeout left to try to get points on the board in a 7-7 tie the Buckeyes double wide out eye formation Fires the tailback, fake to him. Tom Zach to throw, hits his man Carter down at the 40-yard line of Purdue. First down. Clock stops with 22 seconds while they move the chains. Ohio State lines up on the ball. Carter goes wide to the far side. Wide to the near side, it's Lanise. Along with 49, Doug Smith. Tom Zach to throw again. Looking a sideline route, Lanise is there. Lanise stays on the field. 
again they stop the clock to move the chains Ohio State right now is in Spangler's field goal range but remember they are into a win they have a timeout left and 15 seconds to play so they should if they complete another pass be guaranteed of a pretty good field goal opportunity Tom Zach throws it away stopping the clock and a field goal unit may come on they may not with 11 seconds left there Tom Zach and Earl Bruce talking it over Mike says, I want to throw it, Earl. Come on, we've got 11 seconds left. I can throw a pass. we still got the timeout. We can get the field goal team on. He says, no, Mike, I don't think so. I, I don't want to take a chance. But anyway, that's what the, probably the conversation's like over there, and the official is telling them that uh, it's about time to break it up and, and do something. Ohio State on the Purdue 25 with a second down, 10 yards to go. Now, Spangler missed a gimme field goal earlier, a 19-yarder. And he would have, if they snap the ball right now, he would have a 42-yarder, which is not out of his range. He's kicked the 47-yarder, did it against Purdue last year, in fact. So Tom Zach comes on with the play. sends Lamise wide to the far side and Carter wide to the near side. 11 seconds left. They have time for this play. They get it to Byers out of bounds and they give Spangler now a shot from 35 yards out instead of 42 yards out. A gain of seven on the play. And the clock stopped with six seconds left. Third down two. The ball at the Purdue 17 and Spangler with Lanise holding will have a as we said a 35 yard field goal attempt dead into a win of about 15 mile an hour and Purdue takes time out now. Ohio State looking to take a 10-7 lead in at halftime. They had a chance for a 10-7 lead earlier but Spangler the man kicking now missed a 19 yard field goal. This one from 35 into a win. It's a flutter ball and it makes it. It's good. So Spangler with two seconds left on the clock puts Ohio State up for the first time today. 10-7, and they'll kick off. Spangler has it teed up. Wallace and Woodson are deep for the Boilermakers. Spangler will probably just try to squib the kick and not give the Boilermakers much of a chance to return it. Rodney, or uh, James Medlock and Jeff Fulner are the up line of receivers for the Purdue Boilermakers. into that win. Spangler does kick it high. And it comes down to Wallace on his three. Finds the wedge. And it soon breaks down and that's the end of the first half. So Purdue unable to convert on third downs as were the Ohio State Buckeyes. Both came in today converting well over 50% of their first downs but the Buckeyes a woeful one for eight and Purdue one for seven. The difference in the ball game right now, the punting of Tom Tupa, Purdue without field position, going in at halftime, trailing 10-7. Welcome to Oktoberfest at Bob Roman Lincoln, Mercury, and Subaru, where we have over 150 new Lincolns, Mercury's, and Subarus to choose from. The 1985s are here, and the 1984s must go. And because of this, we are giving $1,000 cash back on all 1984 Lincolns, and $500 cash back on all 1984 Mercury's and Subarus. We will also have popcorn and cider all month. Plus, you get a free pumpkin with every test drive. So come on over to Bob Roman Lincoln, Mercury, and Subaru and save! There's one and only one full-service optical center in mid-central Indiana. Lafayette Optical Company offers you the largest, most modern selection of designer frames in the area, including the ultimate in eyewear, the Tura Frame Collection for Men and Women. For your next set of elegant frames or new lenses, let Lafayette Optical serve you. All lenses are custom ground to your doctor's prescription in our own lab. Over 50 years, and Lafayette Optical Company still cares about service to you in downtown Lafayette. As you can see, it's beginning to cloud over at Ross Age Stadium. Paul Stouter back at halftime. Ohio State on top, 10-7. Purdue did score first, though. Took a minute, drove 70 yards. Jim Everett hitting Steve Griffin with a 20-yard touchdown pass, and the Boilers led 7-0. 
But then late in the first period with 4.09 left to go in the first quarter, Keith Byers took off on an option play 20 yards after a Purdue fumble was recovered at the Boilermaker 29-yard line by Ohio State. Spangler's kick made it 7-7. Then on the last play of the first half, Spangler kicked a 35-yard field goal, and Ohio State then took the lead going in at halftime. Time of possession, Ohio State with an edge of about two minutes, 16 to 14. In first downs, Ohio State has an edge of four, 12 to eight over the Boilermakers. Rushing yardage, Ohio State with an edge there, 21 carries for 111 yards, and uh, Purdue 19 carries for 80 yards. Ohio State also with the edge in passing yardage, 149 to 96. Mike Tomzak in the first half was nine of 19 though. And Jim Everett, much more effective, 9 of 13, but he did throw an interception. So total offense, Ohio State with a big edge, 260 to 176. And one of the main reasons Ohio State, too, is ahead in the scoreboard. Uh, they have had great field position in the first half. Tom Tupa has four kicks for an average of 46 yards. Now, Brian Thornton has five punts for an average of 46 yards, too. But Thornton's kicks have come from his own end zone, and Tupa's have put Purdue deep in their own territory. So that has definitely hurt the Boilermakers. The Ohio State Buckeyes penalized three times for 14 yards. Leon Burtnett's Boilermakers, no penalties at all in the first half. Individually, Keith Byers has 67 yards on 12 carries and a touchdown. Ray Wallace, 54 yards on nine carries. So he's having a pretty good day for Purdue. Had a 34-yarder that accounts for most of his yardage, though. Steve Griffin, four catches for 50 yards and the touchdown. And Byers has four catches for 52 yards for Ohio State. Ohio State will be receiving when we start the third period of play. So stay with us from Purdue. The score again at halftime, Ohio State 10, Purdue 7. Brandina has it teed up. Byers and Woldridge are deep for Ohio State. Brandina's kick is a low line drive, and it does come down to Byers, and he fields it on his own three, finds some running room up the middle, breaks into the secondary. Look out. Byers could take it all away. He's horse collared by Rod Woodson down at the Purdue 37 yard line. And Rendina looked like he was shaken up trying to make the stop. Byers, a big kickoff return. So the Buckeyes start out first and 10. Let's set the Ohio State offense. Byers will stay in at tailback. Roman Bates, 28, will be the fullback. Lenise, number one, one of the wideouts. The other one will be number 49, Doug Smith. Judd Groza, 85, started at tight end, but he was alternating much of the first half with John Hutchison. Neither are in there right now. Number two, Chris Carter, is in at a wide out also. So three wide outs in the game for the Buckeyes, and Tom Zach gives the Byers on first down. A little bit of running room. Down to around the Purdue 33-yard line. A gain of, we'll call it a long four on the play. Second down and a short six. WLFI TV 18 Lafayette. Double wide outs to the top of your screen for the Buckeyes on second down and seven. Again from the eye, and again it's Byers. And Byers this time has a big hole, runs by Kennedy Wilson. Dishman pulls him down with a little bit of help from Woodson, but not before Byers penetrates to the Purdue 13-yard line. Big gain up the middle for Byers. Byers now 19, 19 uh, yards on that play, so he has 90 yards on 14 carries. Gets the call again. Losses into the end zone for the touchdown. Not only is he big, he's fast. He exploded through the hole in Ohio State, now tasting sole possession of first place in the Big Ten, knowing that Michigan was upset today by Michigan State, has taken a 16-7 lead, and Purdue hasn't touched the ball yet in the second half. Well, now Byers has his 12th straight game over 100 yards. Spangler's extra point attempt is up. 
And it is good. He kicked it all the way over the retaining net and into a sea of red in the Buckeye section on the south end of Ross Age Stadium. So with 1340 left to play here in the third period, Purdue will just be getting the ball and they have a 10 point deficit to make up. Ohio State's on top 17 7. Spangler has it teed up. Woodson and Wallace deep for Purdue. Byers, after a 61 yard return of the kickoff to open the second half, had runs of 3, 18, 4, 19, and 14 yards. So it's been all Keith Byers for Ohio State. Woodson on his own 12. Hurdles one man. He's out across the 20 to the 22 where Purdue starts out first and 10. Everett will be the quarterback. Brent will be starting at the guard position where he and Jamat normally alternate. The wideouts, Bruner and Griffin. Scott the tight end. Wallace and Bruce King the tailback. Well, no, actually Wallace is coming out and Rodney Carter's coming in now. It's... Bruce King leaving the ball game, so it's Wallace and Rodney Carter in the backfield for Purdue. On first down, Everett's going to throw. Looks to the sideline, overthrows Marty Scott, who is wide open. comes in the ball game with a play from the bench and splits wide to the top of your screen out of your picture and wide out of your picture to the bottom is Steve Griffin. Everett to throw has some time runs up into the pocket waits finds his man Carter. First down Purdue out across the 33 yard line. Loose football Ohio State's claiming they're on it but Rodney Carter has it. He was ruled dead and Purdue has it first and ten. First down 10 from their own 33. The Boilermakers this time in the eye. And King is back in at fullback. Flag down. Everett to throw. Finds his man. Griffin, good, good catch out of midfield. But the flag will probably nullify the play. You know, Ohio State right now with 293 yards total offense. Byers with two touchdowns today for the 12th or the 11th straight game. You see the call of the Buckeyes offside, so the Boilers get a break there. They've yet to be penalized today. But Byers has really done it all on Ohio State's two touchdown drive. He has touchdown runs of 20 and 14 yards. So the gain stands, and Purdue has it first and 10 at their own 49. They need a touchdown here. They need to control the ball and drive and get a score. They need to get the momentum back and get the crowd involved in the game again. Wallace a gain of three off the right side, where he's brought down by Cresilius, 97, for the Buckeyes. comes wide to the near side and it's Bruner wide to the top of your screen now out of your picture to the far side of the field. Everett on the draw. Fakes the draw actually and he's dumped. He should have handed off to Bruce King. Dumped all the way back to the 40 yard line and Ohio State comes up with a big big sack. Third down 18 for the Boilermakers. Everett shifts to the shotgun. Houston was the blitzing linebacker that sacked Everett on the last play. This time a stun up front. Everett gets it away, way over the head of Griffin. The punting unit comes on. The momentum is gone from the Boilermaker crowd. And after an opening touchdown drive of 70 yards, the momentum from the Boiler offense is apparently gone too. Dawson makes the catch back on his own 12-yard line, finds some running room, but he's dropped on the 23. Another good kick off the foot of Brian Thornson with the wind at his back, 46-yarder, and a pretty good return out to around the 23-yard line by 22 Dawson. Lenise comes wide to the near side, wide to the far side. It's Carter. Throws at the tight end right. Fires the call. No one's touched the ball for Ohio State except Byers here in the third quarter, including the kickoff return to start the third quarter. And you might as well give it to Byers because Ohio State would be throwing into a pretty stiff win. First 
first down out across the 35 yard line. Byers with over 150 yards total offense on 20 plays. They go to him again on first down and Ohio State's offense came in averaging about five yards of play and that's what Byers got that time. Both these teams came in averaging around 400 yards total offense per game. Ohio State at 398 Purdue at an even 400 but the Boilers with poor field position today have been unable to do much. The defense comes up with a big play there and that gets the crowd involved to some degree Baldwin and Horner closed in on Roman Bates and stopped him for a loss on the play so it's third down now and seven and Ohio State may be forced to the air. The seventh tackle for loss that Horner's been involved with this year. Tom's act to throw swings it out and the pass is caught by number two Chris Carter but he's about two yards short of the first down we'll see if Tupa comes on to kick I would think he would Ohio State up by 10 here in the third period and the clock running just under nine minutes now to go Steve Griffin is deep standing on his own 20 yard line now he swings back to the 15 Purdue with a 10 man rush trying to get to Tupa's kick. He didn't hit this one real well at all but he does get a good roll out of it. A great roll out of it considering all the way down to the 12 yard line. 44 yards off the foot of Tupa into the wind. Bruder comes wide to the near side and it's Griffin wide to the far side. From the eye King and Wallace are behind Jim Everett. Purdue starting deep in their own territory again. Wallace gains three out to the 15 before he's brought down by two thirds of the Buckeye defense. Not a sellout again for the third straight home game at Ross Age Stadium. 66,261. Wallace gets a break. A little bit of blocking at the point of attack and he's able to squirt his way loose for about six. Still not enough for a first down but Purdue has a third down short just beyond their own 20. Houston and Pepper Johnson in on the stop. 95 Daryl Lee a sophomore from Columbus is in now at a defensive linebacker or lineman position for Ohio State. He's a big boy and Wallace runs right over him. First down Purdue. Purdue's first first down of the second half. They split Rodney Carter way wide to the far side of the field. Everett's back to throw. He's rushed, gets it away. Marty Scott hangs on. Good hands by Marty there. Out across the 31 yard line. He was dropped immediately by Sonny Gordon. Brandina has it teed up. Byers and Woldridge are deep for Ohio State. Randina's kick is a low line drive and it does come down to Byers and he fields it on his own three finds some running room up the middle breaks into the secondary look out Byers could take it all away he's horse collared by Rod Woodson down at the Purdue 37 yard line and Randina looked like he was shaken up trying to make the stop Byers a big kickoff return so the Buckeyes start out first and 10. Let's set the Ohio State offense. Byers will stay in at tailback. Roman Bates, 28, will be the fullback. Lenise, number one, one of the wideouts. The other one will be number 49, Doug Smith. Judd Groza, 85, started at tight end, but he was alternating much of the first half with John Hutchison. Neither are in there right now. Number two, Chris Carter, is in at a wide out also. So three wide outs in the game for the Buckeyes, and Tom Zach gives the Byers on first down. A little bit of running room. Down to around the Purdue 33 yard line. A gain of, we'll call it a long four on the play. Second down and a short six. WLFI TV 18 Lafayette.
bubble wideouts to the top of your screen for the Buckeyes on second down and seven. Again from the eye, and again it's Byers. And Byers this time has a big hole, runs by Kennedy Wilson. Dishman pulls him down with a little bit of help from Woodson, but not before Byers penetrates to the Purdue 13-yard line. Big gain up the middle for Byers. Byers now 19 uh, yards on that play, so he has 90 yards on 14 carries. Gets the call again. Walsh into the end zone for the touchdown. Not only is he big, he's fast. He exploded through the hole in Ohio State, now tasting sole possession of first place in the Big Ten, knowing that Michigan was upset today by Michigan State, has taken a 16-7 lead, and Purdue hasn't touched the ball yet in the second half. Well, now Byers has his 12th straight game over 100 yards. Spangler's extra point attempt is up. And it is good. He kicked it all the way over the retaining net and into a sea of bread in the Buckeye section on the south end of Ross Age Stadium. So with 1340 left to play here in the third period, Purdue will just be getting the ball and they have a 10 point deficit to make up. Ohio State's on top 17 7. Spangler has it teed up. Woodson and Wallace deep for Purdue. Byers, after a 61 yard return of the kickoff to open the second half, had runs of 3, 18, 4, 19, and 14 yards. So it's been all Keith Byers for Ohio State. Woodson on his own 12. Hurdles one man. He's out across the 20 to the 22, where Purdue starts out first and 10. Everett will be the quarterback. Brent will be starting at the guard position where he and Jamat normally alternate. The wideouts, Bruner and Griffin, Scott the tight end, Wallace and Bruce King, the tailback. Well, no, actually, Wallace is coming out and Rodney Carter's coming in now. It's Bruce King leaving the ball game, so it's Wallace and Rodney Carter in the backfield for Purdue. First down, Everett's going to throw. Looks to the sideline, overthrows Marty Scott, who is wide open. Price comes in the ball game with a play from the bench and splits wide to the top of your screen out of your picture, and wide out of your picture to the bottom is Steve Griffin. Everett to throw, has some time, runs up into the pocket, waits, finds his man, Carter. First down, Purdue, out across the 33-yard line. Loose football, Ohio State's claiming they're on it, but Rodney Carter has it. He was ruled dead, and Purdue has it first and 10. First down, 10 from their own 33. The Boilermakers this time in the eye, and King is back in at fullback. Flag down, Everett to throw, finds his man. Griffin, good, good catch out at midfield but the flag will probably nullify the play. You know, Ohio State right now with 293 yards total offense. Byers with two touchdowns today for the 12th or the 11th straight game. You see the call of the Buckeyes offside, so the Boilers get a break there. They've yet to be penalized today. But Byers has really done it all on Ohio State's two touchdown drives. He has touchdown runs of 20 and 14 yards. So the game stands, and Purdue has it first and 10 at their own 49. They need a touchdown here. They need to control the ball and drive and get a score. They need to get the momentum back and get the crowd involved in the game again. Wallace, a gain of three off the right side, where he's brought down by Cresilius, 97, for the Buckeyes. Griffin comes wide to the near side, and it's Bruner wide to the top of your screen now out of your picture to the far side of the field. Everett on the draw, fakes the draw, actually, and he's dumped. He should have handed off to Bruce King. Dumped all the way back to the 40-yard line, and Ohio State comes up with a big, big sack. Third down, 18 for the Boilermakers. Everett shifts to the shotgun. Houston was the blitzing linebacker that sacked Everett on the last play. This time a stun up front. Everett gets it away, way over the head of Griffin. The punting unit comes on. 
the momentum is gone from the Boilermaker crowd. And after an opening touchdown drive of 70 yards, the momentum from the Boiler offense is apparently gone too. Dawson makes the catch back on his own 12-yard line, finds some running room, but he's dropped on the 23. Another good kick off the foot of Brian Thornson with the wind at his back, 46-yarder. And a pretty good return out to around the 23-yard line by 22 Dawson. Lenise comes wide to the near side, wide to the far side. It's Carter. Throws at the tight end right. Fires the call. No one's touched the ball for Ohio State except Byers here in the third quarter, including the kickoff return to start the third quarter. And you might as well give it to Byers because Ohio State would be throwing into a pretty stiff win. First down out across the 35-yard line. Byers with over 150 yards total offense on 20 plays. They go to him again on first down. And Ohio State's offense came in averaging about five yards of play, and that's what Byers got that time. Both these teams came in averaging around 400 yards total offense per game. Ohio State at 398, Purdue at an even 400. But the Boilers, with poor field position today, have been unable to do much. The defense comes up with a big play there, and that gets the crowd involved to some degree. Baldwin and Horner closed in on Roman Bates and stopped him for a loss on the play. So it's third down now and seven, and Ohio State may be forced to the air. The seventh tackle for loss that Horner's been involved with this year. Tom Zach to throw, swings it out, and the pass is caught by number two, Chris Carter, but he's about two yards short of the first down. We'll see if Tupa comes on to kick. I would think he would. Ohio State up by 10 here in the third period, and the clock running just under nine minutes now to go. Steve Griffin is deep standing on his own 20-yard line. Now he swings back to the 15. Purdue with a 10-man rush, trying to get to Tupa's kick. He didn't hit this one real well at all, but he does get a good roll out of it. A great roll out of it, considering all the way down to the 12-yard line. 44 yards off the foot of Tupa into the win. Bruder comes wide to the near side, and it's Griffin wide to the far side. From the eye, King and Wallace are behind Jim Everett. Purdue starting deep in their own territory again. Wallace gains three out to the 15 before he's brought down by two-thirds of the Buckeye defense. Not a sellout again for the third straight home game at Ross Age Stadium, 66,261. Wallace gets a break. A little bit of blocking at the point of attack, and he's able to squirt his way loose for about six. Still not enough for a first down, but Purdue has a third down short just beyond their own 20. Houston and Pepper Johnson in on the stop. 95, Daryl Lee, a sophomore from Columbus, is in now at a defensive linebacker or lineman position for Ohio State. He's a big boy, and Wallace runs right over him. First down, Purdue. Purdue's first first down of the second half. They split Rodney Carter way wide to the far side of the field. Everett's back to throw. He's rushed, gets it away. Marty Scott hangs on. Good hands by Marty there. Out across the 31-yard line. He was dropped immediately by Sonny Gordon. Up to the line comes the boiler, maker offense. To the far side, it's Bruner. To the near side, Griffin. Split backfield, Everett on a counter play, cross buck to Rodney Carter, has a first down. Turf Jackson, 36, is in the ball game. 
The junior from Terre Haute, he's wide to the far side now. Carter is in a tail back behind Bruce King. They shift to the spread formation. Carter moves to a slot left. Everett to throw, looks deep. Griffin's out there, he may go. If he has the speed, he will go. Touchdown, Purdue. 65 yards on the touchdown play. Griffin's second touchdown of the day. His second of the year. And that ties in with Jeff Price for the team leadership in that department. Touchdown reception. Price had two against Notre Dame in the opening upset. And Purdue is back on the board with 526 left to play here in the third period. It's 17-13. Dina's kick is up. He hooked it a little, but it's good. And the 88-yard pass play has Purdue on top. Or has Purdue back in the ballgame. Ohio State still on top, 17-14. We'll be back with the Boilermakers kickoff right after this. Morris Bryant would like to help you plan your wedding reception. I'm Susan Crane. We know you'd like everything just right for that special day. So come to the experts at Morris Bryant. Whether your wedding plans include a guest list of 300 with a champagne fountain and a sit-down dinner, or a more intimate affair with cake, punch, and coffee, Morris Bryant is the place. We want your day as beautiful to remember as you do. Call us today for details. Morris Bryant on Sagamore Parkway in West Lafayette. Pontiac. The editors of Road and Track call the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the world's 12 best enthusiast cars. Car and driver called the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the 10 best cars of 1984. So why did we make it even better for 1985? Just because. The sensational 6000. Only from Pontiac. Buy yours today from John Shaver Pontiac Dotson, Indiana's largest Pontiac Dotson dealer. Mike Randina has it teed up. The Boilermakers on Steve Griffin's 88-yard touchdown reception or 65-yard touchdown reception, go 88 yards in six plays. And Randina kicks it out of the end zone. So that, since it didn't go out of the end zone on the fly, will bring it back out to the 20-yard line. The towels are waving now. The boiler crowd involved in the ball game. Griffin, six catches now for 131 yards and two touchdowns. The Boiler defensive front giving Ohio State a few fits. They didn't hear the snap count. The Boiler defense fired up. Fires didn't get much off the left side. Nothing at all in fact. Second down 10. The crowd again. Calling out loudly. And I know Tom Zach's having some trouble hearing the ball. Or hearing the, himself even with the snap count. Pitch back to Byers. Has some blocking. There he goes. First down. Woodson had him around the jersey and tried to bring him down, but Byers still fought ahead for five more from the 20 or from the 35 out to about the 38. First down, 10 Buckeyes. Again on a play of 18, and the Boilermaker inside people have really been doing the job. Byers is getting a lot of his yards uh, outside pitch plays, that type of thing. Although in the last drive, he did go inside. Bear Strickland just missed him, and Byers is gone again. All the way down to the Purdue 40. Unbelievable. His acceleration for a big back is, is so great. He stands 6'2". He weighs 233 pounds, and he has such great speed that he's virtually unstoppable, even in the open field. now 141 yards on 20 carries unofficially. Tom Zach rolls away. Hey, he's got some running room too. Cuts inside a good block by Loudermill. He's knocked down at the 20. And did he lose the football? No, I don't think so. They whistled it dead. And it's another first down for the Buckeyes at the Purdue 20-yard line. The injured player for Purdue, Rod Woodson, but Denny Miller gets him up. May have had just the wind knocked out of him. Rod comes off, but he does have to stay out for a play. That's
that man Byers is back in. Lanise in a slot goes in motion now to the top of your screen. Byers gets the call, of course. This time he doesn't find much running room. Still gets four yards, though, and Ohio State had some pretty good blocking at the point of attack. Byers now 22 carries for 162 yards. Tomzak wants to throw it. Looks into the end zone. Oh, pass picked off by Donnie Anderson. Now he needs to get some blocks outside. He is gone, maybe down the sideline. Ooh, a clip. Dishman whistled for a clip back at the 10. Anderson needed Dishman's block to get outside and turn it upfield, or else he was down inside the 10-yard line. Well, Dishman gave him the block, but it was illegal. He quit, and Anderson's run back down to the 30-yard uh, line is going to be called back now. There is a flag also out of bounds, maybe a late hit on the part of the Buckeyes, which at that point would be assessed after the foul. So Purdue actually does get a little bit out of this because back at the 10, it's half the distance, and then you tack 15 out from where the uh, penalty is, the clipping's marked off. Purdue's going to have some pretty good field position. Leon Burnett trying to fire up the Boilermakers. They can take the lead now. They have the ball on their own 21-yard line. That's the first interception Tom Zach has thrown this year. For Donnie Anderson's second interception of the year. And Purdue has it on their own 21. Everett on first down, rolls out, has a lot of time. Looks, throws deep. Bruner's wide open. Down to the 33-yard line. William White, 37, was the man beaten on the play. Pandemonium at Ross Age Stadium. You can bet next week they're going to have a lot more towels than what they have here now, but they're still waving them. From the I formation. Purdue with a double wide out, strong side left. Wallace up the middle, off tackle. Five yards. Not a bad carry by Ray Wallace. Maybe even six down to the 27-yard line. Everett brings them up. He's 14 of 20 for 243 yards and two touchdowns. Both to Steve Griffin, who split wide to the bottom of your screen out of your picture. Second down, five. The call goes to Rodney Carter. He has running room. He has a first down inside the 20 or the 22-yard line. Now, the wind is still behind Purdue right now, but there's a minute 40 left to play in the period. If the drive stalls, you'd sure like to see it stall if you're Leon Burnett, so that when Mike Randina comes in to kick a field goal, he has the wind at his back. Price goes wide to the top of your screen. Griffin wide to the bottom. First and 10, Purdue. Wallace is back in at tailback. Bruce King blocks for him at fullback. Wallace carries about three Ohio State Buckeyes for a gain of about three. He showed a little buyer-esque running on his part there. Purdue on this drive, first downs, or their first down yardage, have been 11 yards and 42 yards, and that time three yards. Wallace on second down gets about two, but the, the pattern of this ball game has been when the either Buckeyes or Purdue offense get more than five, let's say five or ten yards on first down, they've been able to move the ball, but if they're forced into a third down conversion situation, both teams woefully below their season's average of converting at better than 50% efficiency on third. The third quarter comes to an end. So at the beginning of the fourth quarter, Purdue will be faced with a third down four at the Ohio State 16-yard line. And I believe that uh, Randina still is in pretty good shape as far as a field goal, even though he will be kicking into the wind if he does have to attempt it. But we'll be back with the Boilers' third down play after this. up to the line. This is a big third down play. Ohio State on top, 17-14 as we start the third period. Now the referee sends the Boilers back into the huddle. From the I formation, Price is way wide to the near side in single coverage. I don't know. They may, well, here he comes in motion before the play. 
play fake. Price is going out, but they throw it instead to Bruce King underneath the coverage. First down, Purdue inside the 10, way down to the six-yard line. Run out of bounds by Richardson and 37 White. Well, Donnie Anderson's interception set up this drive for Purdue. Fulner is in now ahead of Wallace. And King is in a wing formation. Now he comes in motion. First and goal from the six. Wallace up the middle. He runs into a pile of people. Down to the four-yard line, a gain of about two. Purdue also making it a dent in the time of possession statistic. Have the ball for over a minute more than Ohio State in the third period. This is the second play of the fourth quarter. Everett to throw into the end zone. What a catch by Bruce King. His second touchdown catch of the year, and Purdue has taken a lead with 14 minutes and three seconds left to go in the ball game. King ran a, a pretty good route, and Everett overthrew him, but King made a great diving catch. He was three steps beyond his defender when he did it, but Everett threw the ball in a good place. He couldn't afford an interception down there. And King made a great catch, and now he and Price and Griffin, each with two touchdown catches on the year, Griffin with two today, and King had one last week against Michigan State. 20 to 17, Rendina's kick coming. Thornton a good hold. It's good. Purdue on top, 21-17 with 14.03 left. But a flag down, I don't know if it will nullify the conversion attempt or not. It may, it may not. You know, another key part, it's good. Another key part of that Purdue touchdown drive was not only when Anderson made the interception, but the personal foul tacked on by Ohio State at the end of his run back. Purdue would have been back on their own five-yard line with Dishman's blocking below the waist penalty. But that brought Purdue out to the 20-yard line, gave them a little bit better field position to work with, and they were able to drive for the touchdown. So Ohio State, who come in today averaging just 17 yards a game in penalties, has been penalized now four times today for 29 yards, and that personal foul was the biggest of the four. There was roughing the kicker on Rendina's extra point attempt, so Purdue will kick off from the 45-yard line. If Rendina can elevate this ball into the wind, Purdue should get good coverage. Everett on the day, 16 of 22 for 257 yards and three touchdowns. That last Purdue drive, 79 yards in eight plays, ate up three minutes and 43 seconds of clock time. And another big part of it, an onside kick. Purdue has it. Woodson has it. Woodson down to the six-yard line, but a flag is down. Somebody might have been off, offside. Rendina saying it's against Ohio State. Woodson picked the kick off on the first bounce. It, it had gone 10 yards, and as long as Purdue wasn't offside and the play will go against Ohio State, the Boilers are in good position. However, I don't believe you can advance an onside kick. Now, the returning team can advance it, but the kicking team cannot. It should become Purdue's ball at the spot of the foul, or maybe the penalty is on Purdue. Purdue was offside on the onside kick but they were about to take command of the ball game if the offending player had not been offside. I think it might have been Woodson, who was just a little bit ahead of Randina's kick. He picked it up after it had gone 11 yards, and he took off, got all the way down inside the Ohio State 10. Randina still kicking off from the 50 because of the Ohio State roughing the kicker penalty. Now this time he kicks it deep and tries to keep it from going out of the end zone on the fly and does a good job of it. Kicking away from the Ohio State return men, gets it out of the end zone, and Ohio State will start out from their own 20, and the crowd is really wild at this point. The onus is on the Purdue defense now. Ohio State, first and 10, gives it to Byers, gains five, maybe six, off the right side, out to the 26-yard line. Woodson could not have advanced that onside kick. It would have become Purdue's ball where he recovered it. Second down, four. Byers again. Gets outside. Someone can't bring him down, but they do get him out of bounds before he could break up field. Well, they keep the clock going, but Byers was down about a yard short of the first.
Myers 23 carries for 156 yards officially. Gets the call again and gets the first down, but not by much. He was stopped in the backfield, but nobody brings Keith Byers down on the first hit. Nobody. Jason Houston, the boiler player, injured on the play, and he's helped up by Denny Miller. Houston apparently a little groggy. Looks like he got his bell rung, and he may not be back in the rest of the day. In the tail of the eye, 12 20 left to go in the ball game. Purdue up by four. Tom Zach's going to throw. Waits, pass was tipped at the line. I believe Brad Horner got a big paw up and knocked it uh, awry off its course, and it was short, intended for Chris Carter around midfield. Okay. Ohio State again in the eye, and Purdue brings everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Feigning the blitz, now they bring everybody off. Byers gets outside, running room, cuts back inside. A lot of gang tackling, though, and they do get him down after a gain of about eight. But still, Ohio State has a third down and call it two out around uh, their own 42-yard line. Still a lot of time left in this one. And the way the Boilers have been able to throw on Ohio State in the second half, you have to think even if the Buckeyes do score on this drive, Myers is going to be stopped short of the first down, and a flag is down. A flag down thrown by either the head linesman or the line judge. Tom Zach says it's against Purdue. The Purdue coaches say it's against Ohio State. Offside Purdue. Gives him the first down. Maybe Byers had it anyway. He probably did. He, he needed about a yard and a half, and he got two. So he should have had the first down regardless, but... The Boilers give him five on the offside penalty. There's the call and the first down. About to say, even if Ohio State, even, even if they do score here on this drive, Purdue will still have lots of time, and even though they'll be throwing into the wind, the ability to come back in the ball game. Tom Zach sends Laniz in motion. Byers is stopped this time in the backfield. Nice play by 91, Mel Menke, and 92, Brad Horner. Horner was the guy that really stopped him. Laniz wide to the far side, wide to the near side. It's Doug Smith. Carter also wide far side. Tom Zach to throw. Gives a pump fake. Wants to air it out deep. Ooh, the man is open. Laniz and Carter got in his way. What a break for the Boilermakers. Laniz was wide open, and Tom Zach threw that ball an awful long way in the air with an awful low trajectory. That was, a, that was a, as good a throw, I think, as we've seen all year. But the big thing about the play, although Laniz was open for a certain touchdown, Carter, the inexperienced freshman, was running probably the wrong route. And he got in the way of the ball and knocked it away from the plight of the ball that Laniz had his radar zeroed in on, so Laniz couldn't make the catch. Tom Zach threw about a 60-yard bullet. Back to throw again. Gets it away. Picked off.
are in Bedlam at Ross Age Stadium. Purdue leads it 28 to 17 with 10:03 left to play in the ball game, and we'll be back with the Boilermakers kickoff after this. Dina has it teed up and ready to go. Jason Houston is being driven off on a stretcher, so apparently his injury is more than just a slight blow on the head. Rendina's kick a low line drive, and Wooldridge has to let it go into the end zone. A touchback, Ohio State first and 10 from the 20. Woodson was late getting back onto the field on the kickoff return, and I'm sure it was because he was still celebrating on the sidelines after his 55-yard interception return for a touchdown. That's the first interception return for a touchdown by Purdue since Tommy Lee Myers last year against Northwestern late in that ball game. There goes Jason Houston being wheeled off. He was injured on Ohio State's last possession. Now the Buckeyes with their backs to the wall will have to put it up, I would think. They're down by 11 points with 10.03 left. From their own 20 from the I formation, Tom Zach pitches to Byers who finds running room. Woodson can't bring him down. Byers just runs right over Woodson. The entire student section standing here at Ross Age Stadium. Byers got the first down. Here he comes on the option. Oh, this is Woldridge. Woldridge breaks it. He's into Purdue territory down to the 43-yard line before he's brought down. Again, coming over to make the stop, a Purdue secondary man. Well, this time it was Merkel. Well, Tommy Lee Myers made the stop, 47. Lanise goes wide to the top of your screen, wide to the bottom, Doug Smith. Wooldridge again, tries to slide outside. He's tripped up. I think Anthony Rose got a hand out to bring him down. Rose, 68. The middle guard, the largest player on the Boiler squad at 275 pounds. Again, Lanise and Smith go wide to the far side. Carter wider than the near side on second down 11. As Wooldridge lost a yard. The officials stop play. Purdue takes a timeout. Well, they're charged with a timeout. For some reason or other, I don't know if the Boilermakers wanted to call timeout if they were charged a timeout. The conference on the near sideline, Clinton Turner along with Bill Doba and Urban Bowman talking to Bill Mulcrone and Kevin Sumlin. Mulcrone is in the ball game for the duration now. Jason Houston wheeled off with a probable concussion. Purdue defense with the big play in this ball game. Two big plays, actually. Two Mike Tomzak interceptions. One by Donnie Anderson, one for a touchdown. 55 yards by Woodson. Ooh, Corey Cooper destroyed Chris Carter when Carter caught the pass, and a flag goes down. Cooper called for unsportsmanlike conduct after the play. He uh, obviously was hyperactive in his celebration after knocking Carter for the incompletion, so it's 15 yards. Leon Burnett getting the official ruling from the official and not much Purdue can do about it now except suck it up and try to stop Ohio State with 8.58 to go. Buckeyes first and 10 on the Purdue 30. Tom Zach swings it out to Byers. He has a blocker in front of him. Trailing the play, making the stop is Brad Horner on the far side, but Byers still fights his way ahead for a couple extra yards. The man out in front, Kirk Loudermilk, the center again. Still a lot of time left in this one. Byers, the big play again in this drive. Now Wooldridge is in. Tom Zach on the option, draws a crowd. He didn't get the pitch away to Woolridge, and he's dropped after a gain of about a yard. Taken down by, look like 91, Melvin Menke. Bruce in contact with the press box through his assistant coach. 
Ohio State now has it. Second down nine. Byers right now not in the ball game. He apparently was injured. Ooh. Chris Dishman comes in on the blitz. Tom's act just stood him up. Dishman looked like in the atomic drop from championship wrestling uh, with Tom's act spinning Dishman around on his shoulder. It's a sack. And Purdue now has Ohio State in a third down in about 18 situation. The Purdue crowd making a lot of noise. Byers back in for the Buckeyes. They're in the I formation on third down 17. Tom Zach fakes the draw back to throw. Purdue's teeing off on a pass rush and a near interception again and a flag down. Menke hit Tom Zach just as he released the ball. And then there was a flag thrown where someone was in on the defending, in defending, but once a pass is touched, I don't know if the interference call can be made. If it can be made, it will be only because Menke had a hold of Tom Zach's arm and didn't hit the ball. Sumlin nearly intercepted the pass, and the officials are conferring about that right now. And I, I don't know if, if Purdue's going to be whistled here or not. Here comes the play. Here comes the call. Defensive holding on someone. That's five yards, but it's a first down for Ohio State, which hurts. They needed 17 yards to go, but defensive holding carries with it an automatic first down, even though it's just a five-yard markoff. It was a 10-yard markoff. Play really hurts Purdue. That's the first real, real costly. Well, the second actual costly penalty. The first one came on the onside kick after the touchdown that Purdue recovered. The defense is still fired up, though. They're all over Byers. He's knocked for a loss of one, back to about the 14-yard line. Someone was there, Woodson, Dishman, you name him, he was on the spot. Lenny well, splits wide to the far side, wide to the near side. It's Carter, the tight end right. From the eye, Byers runs a little drop route right over the middle, gets the pass, and he's caught right there. But someone just can't bring him down. Byers, you got to hit him low, and someone had him around the waist. Byers still had his freedom of movement in his legs, and he carried someone around a little bit. He's about two yards short of a first down. 6.20 to go in the clock running. Purdue up 11, 28-17. This is the 11th play of the drive. Ohio State, third and two at the Purdue five. Byers gets the pitch. He stopped. He's short. He didn't make it. Zilts was one of them. Menke another. Woodson gets up off the stack. And Byers right now is banged up. He trots off, but you can tell his movement's restricted. And it looks like might be a leg, might be that shoulder we talked about earlier. But he's taken quite a beating today. He's carried the ball 30 times. So he's really done a, a yeoman's work today. And Ohio State now has a decision whether to go for it or kick on fourth. They will go for it. Fourth down three at the Purdue six-yard line. Five and a half minutes left to go. Tom Zach wants to throw into the end zone. He has all day. And it's batted down. Purdue defense holds. Dishman made the play. And again, the towels come out. Pandemonium at Ross Age Stadium. Purdue is about to take over the leadership, sole possession of the Big Ten football race. Well, the rain has held off. It's really dark here at Ross Age Stadium, but it's very bright as far as the demeanor of the Purdue crowd. Double wide out. Purdue needs to hold on to the ball for a while. The Ohio State defense wants to turn it back into the hands of their offense as quick as possible. King gets four, second and six. You know, with Michigan State's win over Michigan today, 
And if Purdue hangs on here and beats Ohio State, it will repeat something that happened in 1979. Wallace gains a yard. It'll be third down five. That year, on uh, the same weekend, Ohio State lost here at ross Age Stadium to Purdue. And that was the last time also that Michigan State beat Michigan. Purdue, Ohio State, and Michigan came into today tied 2-0 atop the Big Ten. If Purdue hangs on, they will be the only team undefeated in Big Ten play at 3-0. Wallace does not have the first down. Unfortunately, Purdue will have to punt from deep in its own territory. Perhaps more unfortunately, Thornton will have to kick into a pretty stiff wind that's picked up as the day has gotten longer. Well, with 3.39 left, Ohio State has taken one of their timeouts. Now, each team has two remaining. The Buckeyes will get the ball back or try to block Brian Thornson's punt from deep in his own territory. We'll be back right after this. Pontiac. The editors of Road and Track call the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the world's 12 best enthusiast cars. Car and driver call the Pontiac 6000 STE one of the 10 best cars of 1984. So why did we make it even better for 1985? Just because. The sensational 6000. Only from Pontiac. Buy yours today from John Shaver Pontiac Dotson, Indiana's largest Pontiac Dotson dealer. PCA stands for farmers, farmers just like you. PCA stands for me. We got a lot in common, too. PCA is committed to agriculture in a big way, all the way. My farm is my living, and my production credit association is standing by with the financing I need to make it work. That's not all. PCA stands for you. See Phil Wilcox in Tippecanoe County and Craig Bloom in White County. Stouter back at ross Age Stadium. Ohio State with 10 men on the line. Thornson takes a couple steps to his left. They're all coming. He gets it away. The single safety back for Ohio State just runs away from the ball. Thornson didn't get much on the kick. A 36-yard kick by Thornson. Most importantly, he got it out of his own territory pretty well. The towels are out all over the place now. Somebody must have brought a box of them over at halftime. Purdue on top, 28-17. Tom Zach brings State up to the line. Byers is in the slot. He runs a deep pattern over the middle. Tom Zach waits, looks, hits his man out of the backfield. Again, it uh, looks like it was Wooldridge. It was. Wooldridge and Byers were both in the game, and Ohio State, after the first down, lines up without a huddle at the 31-yard line, I believe, is where they're going to spot it. Tom Zach up to the line again. Ohio State again with just two timeouts and the clock running. 3.17 to go. Tom Zach rolls, throws, complete. Another first down. Another stoppage of the clock. Lanise caught it. Rod Woodson was holding his left hamstring, and that's not a good sign at all for Purdue. His pass interception return of 55 yards for a touchdown is really the big difference in the ball game. Purdue up 28-17 with 3.12 to go. Woodson runs off, so this is the second time he's come off the field injured. The first time was before the interception for the touchdown. <clears throat> Clock starts, 3.05. First and 10 Buckeyes at the Purdue 19. Split backfield, Byers is in there with Woldridge. Byers gets the call. Gets outside. He's hampered a little bit by that injury now, but he still spins his way down to about the 10 or 9. And he'll be real close to another first down. Again, he's out of bounds, and the clock stopped with 2.53 to go. Byers leaves the ball game. It's second down and less than one for Ohio State at the Purdue nine-yard line. Wooldridge, first down. Clock stops again with 2.49 left. The Buckeyes again go without a huddle. Tom Zach rolls the throw, looks into the end zone. He has a man, Chris Carter. It's a touchdown with 2.38 to go, and it's not over yet by any stretch of the imagination. Now the question is, will Ohio State try to go for two? They have 11 points of deficit to make up. 
a two-point conversion here then makes uh, a situation where they can tie it with a field goal if uh, they want to go for the tie at the end of the ball game. Ohio State going to go for two here in case they want to go for a tie at the end of the ball game. Tom Zach runs the option, fumbles the football, so they will not get in. Menke recovers it. So the try is no good, and Ohio State now will need another touchdown. And you can bet they'll bring in the onside kick unit, and Purdue will have its best people as far as ability to catch the ball up on that first line of defense on the return team. 28-23 with 2.38 to go. Purdue still in the lead, hanging on to a five-point margin. The rain has started to fall here at Ross Age Stadium. Spangler has it teed up. Purdue's defenders standing 12 yards away from the ball. Lee is deep. Here comes the onside kick to the near side. It takes a high bounce. Donnie Anderson, I believe, has it for Purdue. Made a great play, too. Just as it started to rain, I mean, if that kick comes five minutes later and the ball's wet, we could have something entirely different. It's still a pretty, it's going to be a wet ball as the rain, although not coming down heavily, is, is probably going to affect play here in the final 2.33. Ohio State, two timeouts left. And there's Donnie Anderson, the man of the moment. Purdue needs probably a first down. And that will ice the ball game. Marty Scott going in motion. Everett gives to Wallace. Wallace a little bit of running room. Ohio State, of course, will try to strip him of the ball. Wallace gained about six, and the clock now will run. The chant coming out of the stands, go clock go. It's under two minutes, 155. Purdue with a second down five. Scott again shifts into the slot and goes in motion. This time Rodney Carter, and he slipped on the wet turf. Went down at midfield. It'll be third down and about two for Purdue from right there, and a timeout is taken by, I believe, Ohio State. Yes, so they'll have one timeout left with 141 left. Leon Burnett pacing some anxious moments at Ross Age Stadium as Ohio State has taken their next to last timeout. You know he's going to breathe a big sigh of relief if Purdue can get a first down right here. Third down and a long two from right about midfield. The Boilers offense right now probably going to go to Ray Wallace, I would think. He has 20 carries for 89 yards today. A good day's work for Ray. All three, for two, three touchdowns scored by the Purdue offense have come through the air. Two to Griffin, one to Bruce King. And then there's Woodson's interception return for the touchdown. Here it comes, big play. Ohio State, five down, mid on the ball. They're coming with a blitz. Everett's going to throw for it. Swings it out. Bruce King makes the catch, but he was short of the first down. He didn't run his route deep enough. Fourth down and one. So Purdue, with the clock still running, is going to kick it. No, they stop it now. They're going to stop the clock. Purdue's a yard and a half short. Ohio State takes its last time out. And King, who caught Purdue's go-ahead touchdown pass, on the same, really about the same play, was just a little bit short of where he ran his route, where he needed to run his route. Thornson's on to kick. Now the onus again will rest with the Purdue defense. Ohio State again going with a 10-man rush, and Lanise is the lone deep back. Thornson's got to get the kick away. Purdue has to make Ohio State go as long as they can for the touchdown. The clock stopped with 129 left. Here comes the rush. Thornson gets it away. Good kick. Lanise Fair catches it at his own 17-yard line. Ohio State has a minute 23 to go 83 yards. Everybody cheering. The rain bonnet starting to come out now. And Ohio State, out of timeouts, has to work the sidelines. They have to pass. They cannot run. They can't afford to run. Lanise comes wide to the near side. Wide to the far side is Doug Smith. Byers is in a slot. Tom Zach back to throw. Gets it away. Passes. 
complete. Nice catch. Nice catch made by number 25, Wooldridge, out across the 30. And the clock stops long enough to move the chains. A minute 17 left, Ohio State lining up without a huddle, and they've really worked the two-minute drill pretty well today. Split backfield, three wideouts. Tom Zach going to throw a sideline route this time. It's Byers. Byers turns it up, gets out of bounds. Another first down right at the Purdue or at the Ohio State 43-yard line. Clock stops again with 105 left. The Purdue defense that has played so well today now must stop Ohio State. McCrone, Strickland, Corey Cooper in. Tom Zach throwing the deep one. Incomplete intended for Lanise. Stops the clock with 59 seconds left. Buckeye second down 10 from their own 43. Lanise was pretty well covered. Wide to the near side now is Dawson. Ohio State three wideouts. Second down 10. Tom Zach a play fake. Pump fake. Throwing deep. Pass is nearly picked off. I think it was Tommy Lee Myers defending. No, it was Dishman. Dishman and Tommy Lee both wear those orange towels on their belt, and Dishman, who blocked the pass in the end zone for what would have been an Ohio State touchdown, makes a big play here. Third down now and 10, and Ohio State really can't afford another incompletion. They, they almost have to run a short route and get a first down. Clock stopped, 53 seconds left. It'll start as soon as the play goes. Tom Zach's looking for the short one. Menke's on him, gets it away, incomplete. And Wooldridge was open, and he's really complaining, but Tom Zach, in all fairness, didn't see him. And Tom Zach goes down, and now there's a flag down back where Tom Zach was tackled, and I believe it's going to be roughing the passer, or will it be? Maybe Tom Zach did something after the play that was untoward. They're marking it off against Ohio State. Intentional grounding, I guess. Loss of down, maybe? Yeah, loss of down. Intentional grounding. The crowd still waving the towels. And a timeout taken by the Boilermakers. Ohio State now with a fourth and 25. You know, I really don't understand the grounding call, though, because Wooldridge was there. I mean, he was within maybe not 10 yards of the ball. He was within 10 yards of the ball. Maybe not within five, but Tom Zach really seemingly got it to him. They're breaking out the rain gear at Ross Aid Stadium. Ohio State with a fourth down, 25. The ball on their own 27-yard line. Tom Zach back to throw. Gets it away deep. Carter's there. He has a first down. Unbelievable. First down, Ohio State at the 41-yard line, and a flag is down to boot. The flag is down at the 46-yard line of Purdue, and unsportsmanlike conduct called against both teams, so, you know, that's really a break for the Boilermakers. Ohio State retaliated when a, a late hit was delivered out of bounds on Carter, so it nullifies 15 yards Ohio State would have had. That, they would have had four shots from the 30. Now they've got, well, here they're marking it off. They marked it off against Purdue just to set the chains. So Ohio State, for first down, needs to go to the Purdue 20. And now they've moved the 15 yards back, so Ohio State is at the 46. 41 seconds left, the Buckeyes on the ball. The rain continuing to come down, and it's coming down even harder. They change balls from the I formation. Tom Zach a straight drop, looks, throws, batted away by Corey Cooper. 36 seconds left. Double wide outs to the near side. Second down, 25, Ohio State. Tom Zach to throw. Has lots of time. Swings it out to Byers. He turns it upfield and gets out of bounds to stop the clock at the 34-yard line. 28 seconds left. It'll be third down and about 13. 
Third down, 12. Ohio State needs to go to the Purdue 20 for a first. Tom Zack to throw, looking for the first down. Does swing it out again to Byers. He stops short, about seven yards short, and he stays in bounds, and the clock continues to run. 17. It's at 15. The Buckeyes need to get people back and lined up. Purdue taking their time, getting set. Eight. Tom Zack throws it away. And that was fourth down, folks. Tom Zack threw it away on fourth down. I can't believe it. That's it. Purdue's got it. They win. Five seconds left. Purdue takes over. Tom Zack didn't know what he was doing. He threw the ball away on fourth down. And look at the celebration. Uh-oh. Fans coming out of the stands. We've already had enough riots for one weekend here. They'll have to clear the field. And somebody's down and hurt. A couple people down and hurt. A pedestrian is hurt on the field. You saw Leon Burnett on the sidelines. Purdue will fall on the ball. Bruner is the safety man. Ohio State's going to try to get the ball away from Everett. He falls on it. That's all she wrote. An upset. Another one for the Boilermakers. Everett runs away with a game ball. The fans pour onto the field. Purdue has upset Ohio State. They're in sole possession of first place in the Big Ten. And the goal post at the north end is going to come down before this day is over. They're trying to get it now. They've got a game next week with Iowa. We better keep the goal post up. But Purdue has won. They have beaten Ohio State 28 to 23. Mike Tomzak, Keith Byers standing on the field. Unbelievable. They're head in their hands. Tomzak on a fourth down and six, trying to get the clock stopped. Threw the ball out of bounds, using up Ohio State's last down. And it's Bedlam at Ross Aid Stadium. Purdue leading the for the first time since 1979. And that was the last time Michigan beat Michigan State and Purdue beat Ohio State on the same day. It's happened here again five years later. We'll be back and wrap it up from Ross Aid Stadium, a rainy, wet, but happy Ross Aid Stadium, right after this. Monday at 4 on Barney Miller. I wasn't going to jump, I tell you. Then why did you climb up on top of the Washington Arch, Mr. Buckholz? Because it's there. <laughs> why is he going up on top of the Washington Arch? I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get even with the pigeons. <laughs> it doesn't look good. You won't believe this, but according to their records, I'm deceased. <laughs> don't miss Barney Miller, Monday at 4, here on TV 18. WLFI TV 18 Lafayette. 28 23 the final, and you can see they're trying to get the goalpost down at the north end, but they've been struggling for quite a while. The ones that are anchored with two poles don't come down as easy as the ones with one. But let's recap the second half scoring for you and tell you a little bit about what's caused this bedlam. Ohio State led at the half 10 7. After the opening kickoff was returned 61 yards by Keith Byers. Byers then, a couple plays later, took it over from 14 yards out, and Ohio State was all of a sudden up by 10, 17-7. Not to worry. Purdue came back. They went 88 yards in six plays. The biggest play of the game, five probably at that point, was a 65-yard pass from Jim Everett to Steve Griffin for the touchdown. Everett's second touchdown pass to Griffin of the day. Then Purdue got the ball back in the fourth period on the second play of the period with 14 minutes, three seconds to go. Bruce King made a tremendous catch in the south end zone of an Everett pass. Eight plays, 79 yards, and uh, the drive ate up three minutes and 43 seconds. Rendina's kick made it 21-17. Then Ohio State on their next possession, driving was caught at midfield. Mike Tomzak intercepted by Rod Woodson. Woodson took it 55 yards for the icing touchdown of the ball game, 28-17. Purdue stopped Ohio State at uh, the goal line on fourth down when Chris Dishman made a big play to knock down an Ohio State pass on fourth down. Then Ohio State with 238 left. A quick 48-yard five-play drive was capped by a five-yard pass from Tomzak to Chris Carter. And uh, the extra point run was no good. And that made it 
28-25. Then the final series, Purdue punted to Ohio State. The Buckeyes drove from their own 17-yard line and nearly got the job done. But Tom Zach on, his, uh, on the Purdue 30-yard line on the last play of the game for Ohio State threw it away on fourth down. I see that ambulance is out on the field and they're going to be taking somebody away. Looks like a Purdue player who was injured late in the ball game on a, on a pass play. But uh, looking at the individual statistics, Wallace, 20 carries for 89 yards. Everett, a big day, 16 of 22 for 252 yards and the three touchdowns. Byers had a great day, 30 carries, 191 yards, two touchdowns. He also caught nine passes for 92 yards. And Tom Zach, not bad either, but he wasn't as effective as he'd like to be. 20 of 41 for 280 yards, a touchdown, but two interceptions, and they both led to Purdue touchdowns. One, of course, the direct one, Woodson, on the 55-yard return. Now, the field needs to be in good shape, the PA announcer keeps saying, because Purdue next week does take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa probably going to come in with a record of 2-1 and one in the Big Ten, Purdue at 3-0, and oh, and now everybody's going to gun for the Boilers since they are the only undefeated team left in the Big Ten. Second-ranked Ohio State falls 28-23 for John Strathman and Stu Metzger, our crew, and my wife, April. Yeoman work again with the statistics. This is Paul Stouter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the Purdue Replay as Purdue takes on the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's the happy final once again. Purdue 28, Ohio State 23. We'll see you next week.